Yo, here, let me take them. That's okay, I got them. <laughs> Babe, they're way too heavy for you. <laughs> they're not. They are. They're not. Will you stop trying to be such a guy all the time? You're right. Oh. <laughs> they are too heavy for a girl. <laughs> Go, Sam. <laughs> Make it a mess again, Frankie? What's that, a book? What was your first clue? Give me a break. Let me see. Sorry, hands off. Is that book part of your story? Sort of. My story is about stories. Say what? We tell all kinds of horror stories about demons and ghosts and stuff. But no matter what a story is about, there's only one thing that makes it really scary. What's that? Your imagination. Huh? If you're really into a story, you become part of it, and you start to imagine what a horrible thing might be sneaking around the corner, ready to pounce. And you start to wonder what you'd do if you were the one facing the monster. It's your imagination that gets you into a story. And unless you're very careful, you might need your imagination to get you out. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story, The Tale of the Bookish Babysitter. Belinda was everybody's favorite babysitter. Her advertisement in the newspaper said, for kids who hate babysitters, that's it. And a phone number. Oh, Belinda. I almost forgot. Yes. Thursday, 7 o'clock. Uh, yeah, how did you? See you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs> A young couple interested in the Talbot place. I think they're gonna make an offer this evening. Must be the sitter. A babysitter? Mom, I'm 12 years old. Exactly. Now, this girl comes highly recommended. Please, don't be too hard on her. Not like the others. Yeah, yeah. Zombie. The living dead. Good evening, Mrs. Winter. I'm Belinda. Oh, hello. Uh, is something wrong? Uh, no, no. Um, I just wasn't expecting someone so, um, so, uh... So what? <laughs> so what is your secret? Every parent I've talked to just leaves. It's simple. I have imagination. Oh, where's Ricky? Oh, um... If there's any chance you could get him to turn off the television, uh... don't worry. I brought some books for us to read. <sighs> Good luck. You know when the house of Monsieur Beaumont? 
Ricky, say hi to Belinda. We might have been caught. Caught? By whom? Those men you spoke to? They are not men, monsieur. They are dead bodies. Be good now, huh? Don't go to bed. Yes. Too late. Mom. Zombies. He's going through a phase. Oh, I'll fix that. Excuse me? Nothing. Are you leaving now? I, uh, I shouldn't be gone for very long. If anything goes wrong, you can reach me at this number. Nothing ever goes wrong. All right, then. I'll, I'll just... Night, Mrs. Winter. <laughs> get to know each other. Hey, I really like that drawing on your shirt. What does it mean? It's a middle bend that... Hey, I don't want to get to know you. I don't need a babysitter. <laughs> wow! You must be extraordinarily, amazingly mature. Yeah, I am. So keep out of my way. <laughs> I'm afraid. That's not why I'm here. Gimme. Hey! <laughs> we are going to read some books. How did you do that? I'll tell you what. You read a book for a few minutes and... I'll leave you alone the rest of the night. Deal? How many minutes? Oh, I don't know. Let's say five. Then I can watch TV all I want? If that's what'll make you happy. Man, you're the strangest. Aloud, please. I like to hear them. It was late on a dark, moonless night as a wild storm raged across the moors. The hideous witch flew closer to the lonely cottage, swooped down and banged on the door. What, what was that? Don't stop now. This one's boring. You only read one sentence. I can tell. Believe me, I know boring. Well, it's not like TV, you know. You have to give yourself a chance to get into the story. Use your imagination. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, the king's sword could be OK. Good. <laughs> I like that one a lot. Hey, 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 start at the beginning. Why? I'm not going to finish it. The stone walls echoed with a clash of arms and cries of agony. As battles raged, the courtyard ran crimson with the blood of fallen warriors. Yet now all was silent, all was still, as if the very memory of these dreadful events continued to haunt the mel... Mel... Melancholy? Yeah, that's it. This one's lousy, too. Oh, why? <clears throat> too many words. You know, once you start a book, you really should finish it. Yeah, sure. What's this? Nope. <laughs> Not that one. What do you mean? I thought you wanted me to read. You're not ready for this one. Yet. All right, forget it. Where are you going? I'm not reading any more of your stupid books. 
I wouldn't go out there if I were you. Good thing you're not me. Room and a ghost in the hall. I know. <laughs> Don't worry, it's just your imagination. It's no imagination, they're real. <laughs> you had no idea what you were reading, did you? Forget the stupid books. There's a. Don't you see? They came from books. Now, if you help me, we can get rid of them. We burn the books and they go away? Exactly. your imagination if you don't want to end up being her dinner. What do I do? Oh, I'd finish off the story fast. But the book's gone. Well, then make it up. Make it up? Sure, go for it. It's your story now. OK, OK. <laughs> Weird stuff happened. Then it went away, and they lived happily ever after the end. It didn't work. Sorry, <clears throat> that is cheating. You were gonna have to do better than that. Cheating? How can I cheat? I don't even know what I'm doing. Oh. <sighs> I hate when this happens. When what happens? How did you know that was gonna happen? You have gotten two stories all mixed up. <laughs> it really makes things <laughs> See anything? It's right above your head. <laughs> this is getting fun. Now what happens? How should I know? Cause it's your story, silly. What happens? Okay, okay. How about this? They ran down to the basement where he kept his Uzi. Yeah, his Uzi! Just in case of attacks by knights, ghosts, and other nasty things. Afraid not. Why not? What's wrong with that? It's a good ending. Yeah, maybe for some silly TV show or something, but it doesn't make sense in this story. The ending's in that book, isn't it? No, there's nothing in this one. So why are you dragging it around? Why do you keep peeking at it when you don't think I'm looking? Give it to me! 
You really think you're ready for this? Yes, let me have it. Okay. <laughs> have fun. I don't get it. What's a big deal? Uh-oh. I don't get it. What's the big deal, he said. Then Ricky's voice trailed off. I just said that. Ricky, that's me! He stared blankly for several seconds, unable to believe his eyes. For he was no longer in the comfortable suburban house, but in the dank crypt of an ancient castle. The dank crypt of an ancient castle? The walls ascended into the darkness above, unscalable. I guess that means forget about climbing them. He wondered how the workmen who had constructed this tomb had escaped. Oh, gross! For hundreds of years, no human footsteps had sounded in the dreadful tomb. No living soul had drawn a breath of air. Whether of ghostly form or of flesh and bone, who grasped this board would become its bearer to defend to the death? I don't want to defend anything to the death. from another time. Out of place as if from another time. Or another story. You're not a little girl. You're the... Put down the fuck! Get away from me! He knew the answer. What do I know in my heart? Okay, okay. 
Some sort of witch or something. A knight defending a tomb. And that ghost. The ghost! The destruction of the evil sorceress freed the ancient king from her spell. and he was no longer doomed to wander the earth. Yes! The brave lad stood, heart pounding, enveloped in the magical golden blaze. The first light to penetrate the tomb in countless centuries. And in a final act of homage, he knelt to return the enchanted sword to its rightful bearer, the ancient king. What happened? The story's almost over. Never again would he place limits on his own imagination no matter what terrors it was capable of conjuring. For he knew that he could no longer live in a world of willful ignorance. The end. I don't believe it. We were just reading. Yes, that's, uh, that's the part I don't believe. Well, I, I guess I better be on my way. Ricky, this author has your name. The Dark Tomb by Ricky Winner. Did it really happen? It's just a story, Ricky. You know that. Oh, Belinda, how much do I owe you? I've already been paid, Mrs. Winter. Good night. Call me anytime. I'm not girl. Ricky searched all over the library, but he never found another copy of The Dark Tomb by Ricky Winter or any other of the books that Belinda brought over. Because they were all first and only editions. The end. Good one, Bad. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. Hey, hold on. I still want to see what you got there. No, you're way too young for this one. Oh, yeah? The book that the beautiful and intelligent Betty Ann held in her hand was grabbed by that stupid little jerk Tucker and you... <laughs> hey, how did gotcha. you Gotcha. Know? <laughs> Man, are you predictable or what? She set me up. I don't believe it. She set me up. Oh, don't see what it's not. There's always another night.